Singleton. I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us. We're in the sixth the and nobody out. Number 65. 1-1 one, one now. They say you win. You know, this group of hitters doing a good job of putting the ball into play, and that makes things more challenging on the defensive side. Double-digit hits, and they've done a great job of avoiding the strikeout. Only one of them so far, which tells you a lot. On the ground. And he's safe at first. It doesn't really matter where you are in the lineup. Your job is to get on base and try to start a rally if you're leading off an inning. So an infield single does the job right there. Now we'll see if they can make something happen. And at first, now here is Lee. One for two. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. And now runners at the corners. Nobody out. The batter, number 14. Number 14 will hit next. One for three. Right-hander kicks, deals. Dive, and he's got it. The throw. Wendell to second, and a run scores on the double play. First and third, nobody out. You're thinking you've got it lined up for a pretty big inning right here. So that double play is pretty deflating. They get the run in, but now they're starting all over. Now it's going to be number 39. Next offering misses, two and two. Swing and a hard hit liner up the middle to base hit. And that keeps the inning going. Well, Singy, he is locked in there. Well, he's really slowed the game down, and it's like he's moving in full speed, and everybody is a step or two behind. The way that he squared up that baseball tells me that he is seeing it like a beach ball. Runner at first with two away. And now the right fielder, number 32. Next offering is in for a strike. And a pitch. On the ground to third. And it stays fair. Having himself a really now nice game at the plate. Number Just found a way to slap that ball down the third baseline. That's really excellent back control. And it kind of goes back to all those drills you see hitters do off the tee where it's placed in different spots. That was just nice. And the batter now, number 74. That's off the mark. Ball two. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Two outs. Couple of base runners at first and second. On the ground, right side. Tosses to first. And that is that. One run in the inning, but they leave two to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Tycoons on top eight to four. Back here at Lone Depot Park, ready to go, ready to go for the last half of the inning. No and the batter now, Brian De La Cruz. De La Cruz. Number 21 into the game. He's pitching on two days rest. Now pitching number 21.
the 1-1. One, one. Out towards left center. Snags it on the run. And there's one down. Now that the designated hitter, Jesus. And now for the Marlins, Jesus Sanchez. Left-hand batter waits. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Slider got him for a strike three. No, they've had a great plan of attack for him tonight. I mean, finding all the holes in his swing and his approach, just frustrating for him up there. You strike out a guy three times in a game, I think that guy's got to go back and really study some video with his hitting coach, figure out how they're beating him, make this adjustment really quick, because word will get around the league in a hurry. That one the other way. Makes the play, and it's out number three. Miami down in order. They're unable to make a dent in an 8-4 deficit. So a young arm coming on now out of the pen, Sixto Sanchez. His first test will be from the left side, and that's been a struggle for him this season. They've been seeing him pretty well and doing some damage against him. At the play, number 77. And there's one thing on his mind, this at bat, getting that first hit at the big league level. And the next pitch is way outside. Bullpen activity starting up now. Matt Barnes preparing to come on if needed. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Chisholm makes the grab. One down. Now batter. Number 46. And now the DH. Lou. Kicks and deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Another one, two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. One down, base is empty. That misses. The count now, two and two. Fouls it back with two strikes. The why to kick the pitch. That one ripped. Chisholm going back. Back some more. Back some more. And caught on the warning track. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. Pitches outside. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Wide throw pulls him off the bag, and the inning still alive. That's a play you expect your shortstop to make pretty much every time. Pretty routine. Hard to tell if he didn't get a great grip on it or the mechanics on him just broke down, but that gives this offense an extra out to work with. And now the catcher comes up to him. Chen. Next offering is down low. Runner on the move. Pitch misses in. Throw to second. Out there. And that ends the inning. Well, trying to get into scoring position, but a great catch and throw to end the inning. That's the way to pick up the pitcher. And welcome back. Bottom of the seventh, and here's the catcher, Nick Fortes. The 2-1. 
Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. That'll fire up the dugout. His first homer of the year, it's 8-5. got in the jet stream on a line drive we saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders which is usually bad news and all of a sudden they're back in this ball game here's Joey Wendell and a 1-1 one -one. and that one fouled off Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. One and two here. Wendell checks his swing. Appeal to third. Did not go. The pitch. Up the middle, and that chance handled. Not in time. He's safe. Definitely a tough play right there, and he had a little trouble on the transfer. Didn't seem to be able to get the grip and get rid of it, and that made all the difference. Yuli Gurriel comes up to hit. Hard ground ball, base knock. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Couple of singles back to back. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Luis Arise stands in. Lefty ready, and a 1-1. That one fouled off. Wendell on second. Guriel at first with no outs. Line drive, and that's a base hit into center field. Wendell headed for the plate. He'll score easily. And now just a two-run deficit. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit, maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. <laughs> Jorge Soler up at the plate. He's already homered in this game. First and second here, no outs. Cuts and misses, it's a strikeout. Thought it was a pretty good pitch, top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Two on, one out. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Dish looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boo. Still only one out here in the inning. Ground ball could be two. And that one handled in plenty of time to first. Awesome play there. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Here's the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion, and he's in full speed. The 1-1. Foul ball.
Second and third, two down. And that one is lifted in the air, and that'll fall for a base hit. One runs in, now a second crosses the plate. Tied up at eight all. Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you can come through with a good swing. And there he doesn't try to do too much. So two down, Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. Here's a 1-1. Way out front for strike two. Up the middle, it's through for a hit. And that moves the go-ahead run to scoring position with two gone. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch, just shot it through the infield. Now a good opportunity to potentially jump ahead in this game here in the later innings. Gene Segura at the plate here. They hand the ball over to a new arm, Chen. He last pitched two days ago. And the right hater deals. And a count one and two. First and second, two down. In the air, out towards left center. And that will end the inning. Nine men come to the plate, four score. Eighth inning coming up. We are deadlocked at eight apiece. Righty reliever out of the pen, Matt Barnes. He's making his second appearance of the season. Matt Barnes. Here's the catcher, Chen. For Chinese Taipei, the catcher, number 65. The 1-1. One, one. Check swing, appeal to first. And he won around. Just enough that time. Next offering is downstairs. That's out to center field. He's got it. And there's one down. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit, and then from there can really settle in. Really been able to slow down the game tonight with his at-bats, and the biggest one he's had so far, he doesn't look anxious at all. Next pitch downstairs, and that's ball three. There's a strike. Miami's bullpen with some action. JT Shagwa appears to be getting loose. Ripped on the ground a second. In time to Guriel. And that quickly two away. Now batting. Number 14. And now the center fielder, number 14. And the righty deals. He swings and fouls one off. And now two and two.
That misses the zone. And now three and two. Number 39 waits on deck. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. here in Miami bottom of the inning and now the catcher comes up to him Nick Fortes next pitch misses and that's ball two And that one is in for a strike. Getting a little frustrated with the strike zone. Swing and a ball popped up. Number five settles under this one. Drops into the glove. And there's one away. That was a good hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. The 2-1. Bounce to the left side. Rolls across the diamond. And that quickly, two away. The battle. The first base. Here's Guriel. Chris, baseball today, so many strikeouts, and they are available to pitchers. But this is a guy that puts the bat on the ball and is kind of different from the players. Hit hard, should be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. In with a double, and the go-ahead runs at second with two out. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. I'll tell you, man, it's such a good feeling when you smoke a line drive into the gap like that. I mean, sure, home runs are king, but I feel like nothing makes you feel like a true professional hitter more than a bolt the other way. A lot riding on this next at bat now as they look to take the lead at a critical point in this one. Luis arrives, the next to hit. 2-1 now. Line drive. Puts the squeeze on that one, and that'll end the inning. Well, this guy competes hard. You see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Now into the ball game on defense, Garrett Cooper. He takes over as the new first baseman. Now and now number 39 good swing out of him last time ripped a liner into center top nine and it'll get started with a pinch hitter number 36 a critical at bat in this game for him Swung on, belted. That's got a chance. Gone! He circles the bases. Home run number five on the season. It's 9-8. Chris, he's homered in back-to-back -back games now. Yep, seeing the ball well, and he's got his timing locked in. He's looking pretty dangerous at the dish right now. So tough to come in as a pinch hitter and have success. I mean, you really have to keep yourself locked into the game and ready at any time. So it's always impressive to me when someone jumps in there and hits it out. It's a huge lift for your ball club as well. New pitcher for the Marlins, Steven Oker. And he's coming in to pitch on four days rest right here. And that might not be a factor at all in terms of being rusty, but he should definitely be well rested. And now, number 32. At the belt and fires. Battling here as he fouls it away. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. 
And look out as that one ran in and got him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Well, it's safe to say he won't be getting invited to the charity golf tournament this Season. Tori Lovello making a move for a new bat. You champ. A runner at first for him, nobody out. Fouls one off. Two and two. Got it by him for the K. Good pitch right there. I mean, he's attacking a location that this guy at the plate tends to have trouble with. And there's just so much information in this day and age, sometimes too much information. But the guys that can take that information, process it, and then go out there, Boog, and execute the pitch, go right after that hitter, and get the result that they were anticipating, that's really good pitching right there. And it's a good job of the pitcher and the catcher working together. And now, number 77. Ball Next pitch three. is downstairs. Three balls, one strike. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Runner, yes, yes. Runner on the goal. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Throw to second, and he's out. out. Man, I see him trying to be aggressive right there late in this ball game. Trying to add on to that lead. You know, I really like the thought, but it just didn't work out that time. Nice job by the defense right there to keep things right where they are in terms of the score. Three, two now. Three. He goes down looking. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's down to one here at nine, eight. You're dialed into the show. Staying in the game on defense, number 36. He entered the game to pinch hit, and now man second base. Also entering the game, Yu Champ. He takes over as the new first baseman. And at the play for Miami, Jorge Soler. He's already homered here in this one. And the pitch. This to third, and that's a fair ball. Man, he just absolutely turned on that one, ripped it down the line. Nice job of staying in his mechanics. No outs, runner at first. Next to hit, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Here's a 1-1. Line to left. Fair ball. Back-to-back -back base hits. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Now a huge at-bat in this game coming up. Digging in, Brian De La Cruz. And a swing and a miss. Swings and misses, struck him out. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the dugout. He's got a pitch to hit and just couldn't get to it. I think that slider really caught way more of the plate than it was supposed to. Here is Jesus Sanchez.
The new pitcher in the game, Wang. And I can't imagine any save is an easy one. You're holding a small lead on the scoreboard, and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can. So it's always high stress. Let's see what he's got here to try and close it out. That misses the zone. And now three balls and a strike. Big spot. Tying and winning runs aboard with one down. And that'll load the bases. They're not ready to go home quite yet. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Here at the bottom of the ninth, one out. Now here is Gene Segura. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. The 1-1. One -one. Here's a strike. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. And a ball and two strikes. Diving and he can't make the play. In comes the runner from third. It's 9-9. Huge moment for him and his team, Boog. You know, some guys just grip it a bit too tight in a big spot like this, having a chance to tie it up in the bottom of the ninth. But he didn't let the moment get to him. Comes up with the RBI knock, and now he's giving his teammates a chance to walk this thing off with a win if they can push across another run. And now Nick Fortes. Next offering is foul back. And a pitch. Sets him down looking. Not sure about that call. Pitcher might have gotten a friendly strike three. Oh, that was such a great opportunity to grab the lead. You had the infield back. All you've got to do is just put the ball in play on the ground and you drive across a run. It's a frustrating outcome for the hitter. Now, I'll still have a chance, but it's probably going to take a clutch hit with two outs. Joey Wendell digs in now. The 2-1. Swing and a miss as he was late. Comes a 2-2. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Pulled the string of the changeup. So they can't push across the winning run, and that means free baseball here this afternoon. Nine isn't enough to decide a winner, so we are off to extra innings. And we are tied 9-9. Nine, nine. Back now, we're in extras, and there's a new arm on the mound, J.T. Shagwa. And he comes on here for the first time this season, and I'm sure there's some nerves involved in that, so we'll see how he settles in. Now it's the D.H. Lou. Almost drove one out of here last time up, wide out to the warning track. Man at second, nobody out, and Chris... Certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. And he deals. And it's fouled away. The 2-2. Number five. Waiting for a turn at the plate.
Righty delivers. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Runner around third. He'll score. It's 10-9. Well, they didn't waste any time as they not call the runner from second to get on the board. Huge for team confidence and how you approach the situation. Still have a guy on base, and now they'll try to add on. And a 3-1 on the way. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. De La Cruz calls it in, and there's one away. Now that number 65. Chen. Tori Lovello yeah, making a move for a new bat. Number four, runner on first Number and one four. down for him. The extra innings rule placing a runner on second to begin the inning was a big move for baseball in 2020. So, Chris, how has that changed the way relievers approach these innings? Well, I don't think it's that much different from coming in to clean up someone else's mess. Definitely not ideal, but the best relievers welcome challenges like this. The 2-1. And there he goes. This one in the air right field. Solaire gets under it. Makes the grab. Two down. Now batter, number 22. And here is Lee. Lou off of first with two away. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. For a guy that's been swinging the bat well all game long, that was a pretty ugly swing right there. I'm sure he'll tighten it up on this next pitch. 2-2 two -two now. And that's just foul. Shagwalk picks the first. Lou dives back in safely. Righty to the plate. Chop to third. Wendell throws the first, and that's the third out. So one run in the inning on this base hit, and the back and forth continues. It's 10-9 now. Back after this on the show. So remaining in the game defensively, number four. He takes over behind the plate to do the catching after entering the game as a pinch hitter. And now it's Garrett Cooper up to him, taking his first at bat of the game after entering. On defense. One one is fouled off. Line drive, that's a base hit. Runner around third on his way to the plate. Throw is offline and he scores. How about it? 10 10. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring at bat. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. No outs, runner at first. And up next for Miami, Luis Arias. Fired to second, a sensational double play. I think there's always something pretty about watching a 5-4-3 double play get turned. I mean, just seeing the ball whipped around the diamond with quickness and accuracy, that was nice. Jorge Soler getting ready to hit. Ball to strike. The pitch. Fouled off. He was late. The 
The wind and the pitch. That one misses. It's two and two. All tied up. And here in extra innings. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Well, they pick up one run on the RBI single, and it's now a 10 10 tie. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. So the Marlins go with a new arm. AJ Puck bringing in the lefty with a left handed hitter coming up to hit. Classic bullpen move right here, so we'll see how it works out. Number 14 digs in now. Extra innings certainly had a different feel starting in 2020 with a new rule placing a runner on second to begin the inning, and that forced teams to rethink their strategy in extra frames. Yeah, much less margin for error, and Boog, to your dismay, not much sacrifice bunting. Teams oh, usually yeah. try for the big inning. Certainly not that much bunting for the road team as they try and play for the big inning, but for the home team, if the road team doesn't score, you'll see the home team bunt sometimes. Here's the second baseman, number 36. One for one so far today with a solo homer in his first at bat. Strike two. Definitely a strikeout situation right here. Lots of ways for that go ahead run to score if the ball's put in play. And a one two. Yeah, that's too high. In this situation, he's trying to get you to pop something up or jam you. That's a really good take, knowing you got an opportunity to drive in a run here. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Oh, that's a huge strikeout right there. Big second out. Infield was in. They were playing the full court press, and he got the swing and miss. Keeps this one tied. This next at bat should be a lot of fun. The odds of wiggling out of this just went up considerably. Now it's the right fielder, number 32. And down on strikes he goes. Huge strikeout there. Nothing across, no base hits, no errors, and one man left. One run can win it as we move to the bottom of the 11th. We're all even at 10 apiece. Welcome back. We're at extras here. Here's the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Here's a 1-1. And that one pulled foul. Got him looking. He's got to be frustrated with that call. Well, big strikeout right there, and maybe a little controversial with the call. I think he got a little bit of favor on the mound, no question about it. It's not exactly what you want to see in a big spot like that, and I'm sure there's some chirping going on from the dugout, making it clear. That wasn't his best call behind the play today. Number 60 will take over here. This is his third time out this year. Now, Number 60. One away, and the game winning run stands at second. And here is Brian De La Cruz. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit. But when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. Pitch misses, and it's 2-2. Two and two. That's a little bit low. Home plate umpire is trying to tighten things up a little bit. The winning run on second base, and he walked him. Oh, well, he took his chance at getting him to chase right there, but with first base open, walked out a bad thing. He set up a double play opportunity if he can induce a ground ball. And now here's the Marlins DH, Jesus Sanchez.
Rolled to short. Possible two ball. Good feed. That's one. Double play, and we have more free baseball on the way. They made it look easy, but it started with a nice feed to the second baseman from the shortstop. Perfect turn, and they're out of this jam. Back here in Lone Depot Park. All set for the start of the inning. And now it's going to be you, champ. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Tanner Scott getting ready to go. Out towards right center field. And that one hops the wall. Coming home. He will score. It's 11 to 10. And he'll pull into third with an RBI triple. Well, this has the makings of a big inning as they triple home the runner from second. Yeah, and now the home team has to be on their toes defensively. Probably bring that infield in. Can't afford to fall further behind and make your job tougher. So up next, number Number 70 pinch hitter coming on. Chan. Big spot for him here. Number 40. Don't be surprised to ball on the ground to the corners that they come home with the baseball instead of going to first base. The 1-1. One, one. In the air, right field. Brings it in. Runner tags for home. The throws offline. He's saved. And they lead by two. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough, and that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. And next is the designated hitter, Lou. Hey, partner, how's your scorecard looking right now? A little dicey, kind of hieroglyphics style at the moment. You know what it's like, Singy? Remember our trip to London, Yankees and Red Sox in 2019? I think there were, were there 50 runs scored in the two games combined? My scorecard was ugly for that series. And there's two away. Yeah, pretty ridiculous. And you use, like, five different now colors now. of pens, so, Number like, five. it's just a mosaic over there. Yeah, I mean, I, I know you're always judging the different pens. Like, you know, I got the skinny scoring pen, and then I have the red, and then the black, and then I got a highlighter. So there is a lot going on. The 1-1. One -one. At the ball. Next pitch oh, is inside. Three and one. Oh, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. 3-1 now. In the air, out towards right center. Solaire puts it away, and that is the third out of the inning. So two runs in the inning, one hit, no errors, and no one left on. And now we'll see if what's left of this crowd can rally their troops. Bottom of the 12th coming up. Chinese Taipei here 12 to 10 now staying in the game on defense Shan. he'll be the new left field Segura to start things off Gene Segura he has been really solid at shortstop next pitch inside and it's two and one activity in the bullpen Tanner Scott the left-hander up and throwing The tying run at the plate. Swings through that. Not sure what's going on right there. No chance. Probably have some uh, funny texts from his buddies after the game. Two two now. Ground ball to the right side. Nice grab and very nicely done for the out. First of all, that's a great diving stop to keep the ball on the infield. Then he's able to get up and get an out. He also keeps that runner from advancing any further. If that ball gets through, the complexion of this inning could be drastically different. 
Next to hit, Nick Fortes. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Now here is Joey Wendell on the ground to third. On to first, ball game. Well, when you go on a road trip, you're looking to play 500 or better. And the only way you do that is when you scratch and claw and you grind out. And they did that in this one. 12 inning win on the road. Very impressive. And guys are going to come into the clubhouse for the next game. They're going to be pretty encouraged about how they pulled for each other. And your final 12 10 for Chris Singleton and our entire crew. I'm John Chomby saying so long. Time of the ball game, four hours and 29 minutes. Thank you for joining us here tonight. And we remind you to please drive home safely.